everybody, it's Renee from Tailspin Farm. I am a fiber artist, crocheter, knitter, spinner, um, yarn dyer, and I make things from my Angora yarns mainly. Um, I also raise the rabbits here at the farm. And today I am hopping on to talk about drop spindling and how to do that with Angora fiber. Um, I had this question a few months ago and I am just now getting to the video most of you know that we have moved recently um, back in April and I'm finally feeling settled and getting things where they need to be and I want to get some of these video requests uh, up on the channel. So I have raised and am raising Angor rabbits. Um, it's been many years now that I've been doing that. I actually just added on or added more to my um, my bunnies this last weekend I got five new rabbits I'll have to do a video of them and kind of show you some of the differences in the rabbits that I have we'll do a little talk on that but um, today I wanted to talk about drop spindling I started out drop spindling actually um, I took a class at a local yarn shop and that started me on my journey um, and then from there I got the rabbits shortly after that. I was looking for, at the time, we only had an acre of land, and I was looking for a um, small animal, fiber animal that I could use. I had never seen Angora rabbits in my life. I didn't even know they existed until I went to a fiber festival. Um, if you guys are near or around a fiber festival and have never been to one, I would highly recommend it. Um, it it opens the, your your eyes to what is out there and the possibilities in the fiber um, arena, and that that's how I came across these rabbits. Um, and you will find different breeds of goats that you can get fiber from, and all the sheep and the amazing wool and fiber you can get from all of those things. So fiber festivals are great um, great places to go and kind of get the feel for what you might be interested in doing. So I started out on a drop spindle. I actually um, learned on a supported spindle, um, which is this little guy here. And um, essentially you set it in a little cup and that's how I started spinning. Um, I don't know that I could do this anymore. I haven't tried in a while. Um, and then my first spindle was just a simple I think this is a student spindle um, that the, the sh person that I took the um, class from, that's what she had for us. And over the years, I have collected different ones. Um, I have this one that my son made me. I have, um, I'm not sure if this is like an antique one or what, but I had a friend give me this one. There are some beautiful spindles out there. I have get them out of here. I also have a Scottish spindle. Um, we are Scottish um, and this is called, if I pronounce it right, it's called a Jelligan. This is a really hard spindle to work from. It's very light. Um, I have gotten the hang of it a little bit, um, but it is, it's tricky to, to use. My favorite spindle is this one. This is an Ashford spindle um, and this is a top whirl. So this is the whirl. Um, there's a hook on top whirl and this spins just like this which I'll show you in a minute. This would be considered a bottom whirl spindle because this one spins like this. Um, this has more weight to it which I like than this one and this one too I'll show you how to hook the yarn on this one in case you get something like this. Um, this one, you you wrap it around the bottom on the whirl and then you do a hitch knot. At the top there is a um, there is a divot here and there and that's how you hook your yarn to work from. So you're basically spinning it like that. Actually, I think I just unspun it. Go in the wrong direction. Um, so that is how the spinning works. Same thing for a top spindle, except for on this one there's the hook, um, and you just bring your 
fiber or your yarn leader up and around and that gets you started um, to start spinning. So let me see what the best angle to get you at. Um, I had a request to show how I spun Angora on this. Um, my preferred method these days is always my wheels, but um, I know a lot of people out there don't have the wheel and want to get started in this and a drop spindle is a perfect way to do that. It's inexpensive and it's quite easy once you get the hang of it. I always, with drop spindling, I would always recommend that you card your fiber first to get it into, um, get your fibers all lined up and that's what this basket is. It's a big basket of carded fiber. I usually use hand carders on my Angora fiber, which are these. You've seen them before. Uh, again, you don't have to purchase, spend money on these. If you have the dog um, paddle combs, you know what I'm talking about. You just get two of those and they work almost the same way. That's what I used the first couple years that I was doing this. I didn't want to invest a lot of money into it. And so before I had mine, I just used those and it worked perfectly. Um, and that will line your fibers up to the biggest trick with um, drop spindling is let's see I want to get a good angle so you can see what I'm doing here um, so I am right-handed and I am going to hold the fiber in my left hand you want to keep it kind of in um, a fistful because you don't want it spinning into here as it's turning. You don't want anything draping down uh, and getting caught. So I kind of throw it, the leader, over my hand. And to get started, um, it's the same idea as the spinning wheel. You're always going to spin on one way and ply the opposite direction. So I always spin my Okay, I've got the dishwasher going and I've got things in the oven. Um, I still haven't found a really good spot to film quietly yet, so we will get there. Um, so I have my um, leader wrapped around the hook. I have the um, carded fiber in my hand. Oops, I was wondering if that's going to happen. Let me get a better leader started here. That one was kind of thin. What you're going to do is simply put it on, as I was saying, you spin on clockwise. So I'm going to spin this clockwise and you want to get fiber from your hand started on the spin. And I'm trying to keep my hands out of the way so you can see and just working and you don't want to hold on to your yarn that you're spinning too long because then it's not going to spin throughout the length of this so keep spinning and hopefully you can see that between my hands it's starting to spin into there and I just keep doing that until I it basically gets close to the ground And once you hit the ground, you bring it back up, you undo it here, and then you wrap it around your spindle. I got a little twist in here, and you can tell it's going to turn into yarn, or you have a good spin on it, when you can put it onto itself, and you get spin. That's what it'll look like when the when it's plied. So Angora isn't um, a whole lot trickier on the drop spindle than other fibers. Um, the other fibers would be more probably easy, other fibers are easier to spin because of the length of the fiber possibly. My Angora is fairly long anyways, but Angora is a very slick slippery fiber and that's where you have to kind of get used to it where other fibers have more grab to it um, and I just keep doing this until it stops and then I spin it again and 
that. Let me pull back just a little bit so you can see more of the length. Okay. Get it spinning. And you can go quite a ways. Um, I know people drop spindle in the car. You don't have to go all the way down to the ground. You could do this while sitting. You just, it, like all spinning, I feel like there is a certain, um, when you get it, you get it. It just feels right. And you can do as thick or thin as you want on here, just like a wheel. Although if you're spinning quite thin, you just wanna be careful about getting not getting it too thin. Um, just because it will it will break and that's really all it takes uh, let me move back in a little bit is just to get the spin and the feel for the pulling how much to pull and you can kind of see and again when you pull it back together you get yarn just like that this back um, once you get your fiber on here there's a couple different ways that you can apply uh, you can take um, you could take a ball winder and ball wind off from two of these and then um, put the two, you can put them in like bowls, yarn bowls work great for this, or cups, deeper cups. You could put two balls in there and essentially you're gonna do the same thing. You're gonna have a leader on, you, if, you're, if you're applying on a drop spindle, you'll do the same thing. You'll have a leader. You'll tie the two ends from your, each of your balls onto here. And then instead of spinning clockwise, you just spin counter, counterclockwise and that will ply them for you and it will ply right on just the same idea as putting one ply on. Um, so I hope that answers your questions. I hope you um, try this if you're interested. It can be very fun and relaxing once you get the hang of it. And again, I don't think Angora is any more difficult other than maybe the slipperiness and you have to get a feel for that. But once you do, um, you'll be able to make yarn just like I did. So I hope you all have a great day. If you like this video, please click the like button and subscribe to my channel if you haven't already. You can find me over on um, Facebook and Instagram at Tailspin Farm. And I hope you have a great day. Thanks, guys.